back to the TensorFlow tutorial this time and for this time I'm going to talk about what is overfitting and how to solve the overfitting problem in TensorFlow. So basically the overfitting, if you look at this picture over here, uh, this is the uh, red cross is our data points. So this one is underfitting, which means this predicted line cannot fit into our data. This is underfitting, the, the line does not fit the data very well. Uh, and the middle uh, line has the very nice curve to represent the, all the data points. But the, this one is the overfitting line, which means the lines learns the uh, training data very, very good, but negatively good. So they fit the data and minimize the error very close, even close to zero. But when uh, this line, use this line to predict all the data, so maybe I will have another task data over here, or have another task data over here, or over here. This line cannot represent the task data very well, even the, represents the training data very well, and minimize the loss or error in the training process very well, but not in the task data. So this is the overfitting problem exists in the regression problem. How about the overfitting problem in uh, the classification problem. So you will see we have two different group of data. One is the uh, blue class and one is the red class. So the red, uh, so, so, so the black curve can represent the data very well to separate the blue and the red data very well. But uh, if the machine learning trends very good to predict the task data, uh, to, to, to predict the um, training data. So this is the training data and the uh, green line is the overfitting line for the task data. So they can uh, predict very high accuracy about the training set, uh, only in the training set. Because you can see here, they uh, uh, include the blue color, even this one outlier to uh, to the blue point to the blue class and even includes this outline to the uh, blue class as well but it, in the real life this green color line cannot predict uh, as good as the uh, black color line so we're going to avoid this overfitting problem in the machine learning or in the uh, tensorflow or in your program so what we're going to learn is to learn uh, basically to minimize this one. We're going to use the tensor boards in this class. So if you don't know the tensor boards, check out my previous video to uh, get the knowledge about the tensor board. So we're going to plot the loss of our prediction and the, uh, for the test data and also the training data. So in here, the training data is the green line and the task data is the orange line. So we can see the, uh, the loss. The lower loss means that the machine learning learns uh, better than the higher loss. So uh, for the training data, you will see the training loss is lower than the task loss because this is uh, overfitting problem. We can predict the training data very well, but we cannot predict the task data very well. So we have this gap in between. Uh, we're going to predict the task data as well as the training data. So let's show you the uh, code example. Uh, as same as before, I've uploaded this pr uh, practice code for you in my GitHub. Just feel free to find it in my description and feel free to download it. So today we're going to use the dataset from sklearn. So if you don't have the sklearn module, then you just to uh, pip install the sklearn module. Uh, because if I use this module, it show a bigger overfitting issue in this example. So, uh, input sklearn and use the digital number dataset, and we're going to input the cross validation to to separate our training data and task data, because you know we separate training and task, use the training to train and use the task to task. Uh, they are independently uh, separated dataset. So doing this is better to uh, to show the overfitting problem. 
and uh, what we also need to uh, import the processing label bi uh, binarizer to uh, to binarize in in this digital target is for y uh, the real data y and for this one it's the number of one two three four five like this but we're going to use the label binarizer banner, to uh, to becomes uh, just like before to become something like this one something like like this one in the tensorflow example so let's to load all data and separate the data to x train x task and y train y task two groups and uh, we're going to use the add layer function and we're going to uh, going to use the placeholder and this is to calculate the cross entropy which is the loss and to use the gradient descent to minimize the loss and in here i add another line to record the loss which is cross entropy which is showing in here this is cross entropy um, and uh, uh, one thing that I need to mention is that once you want to show the cross entropy or scalar summary, you would also add another histogram summary because well, I have tried that if I do not add any histogram summary, it will show nothing in, in, in the uh, website or for this one, it, sh it shows nothing about the lost. So I have to add another uh, histogram summary, whatever, or when, uh, wherever you want to add to describe your outputs or describe your weights, but at least you should add one. And uh, so that is the scholar, scholar summary to uh, record the loss and merge to merge all summaries, then to have the prediction, the training steps. So we start to add some layer, add output layer. That is L1. I just copy and paste. That is easy. Uh, okay, layer one. Add one layer. So the input size is uh, eight times eight. Uh, that is sixty-four. Uh, so the input size is sixty-four, and I choose the uh, the, the hidden layer units is fifty units, and for the uh, prediction, the output layer will have 50 inputs and 10 outputs for uh, 10 possible digital numbers. And I use softmax to, for the uh, classification problem and use 10H for the activation function in my uh, hidden, hidden layer. So uh, I will use, what else? I will use two writer, summary writer, one is for my training, yeah, training, train writer for my training process, and I will store all the training file in my logs and uh, the the sub folder. The sub folder is train, and I will store all my task data or task uh, task results in my task folder, and both of them to use the session graph. This is task writer and train writer. Later on, we'll add use the train writer to add one uh, one training result and task result. So let's add the train. I just copy and paste. <laughs> Make my life easier. Um, so that is the train result train result and task results we're going to run the merge and uh, let's just ignore this first I will add this later on to show what is that mean in this code so and I will add uh, train writer to add the summary which is the train results and uh, the train results is basically the uh, cross entropy over here and the test results to add into the task uh, writer which will install in the task folder and train folder separately so I think that is all 
and uh, I think I can run this. Uh, before that, I need to. Yeah, I think I need to delete this folder because it will duplicate my results. So for this one, we did nothing to reduce the uh, overfitting problem. We just show you what is the overfitting problem by using this code. And later on, we show the dropout method to deal with the overfitting problem. So that is all down. And then you will see a folder named uh, logs in my desktop folder. And it has task data and training data over here. So I just uh, get to my terminal over here and uh, direct to my uh, desktop because the, uh, the, the, the logs folder is in, on my desktop so uh, desktop Desk. yeah, right now I'm already on my desktop just show you the process to get into your desktop or some folders that you stored your uh, locks folder and then we're going to use the tensorboard to visualize the your data tensorboard and uh, log direct equals to logs we don't need to specify the subfolder subfolder of task and trend it will automatically to look into the trend folder and task data so just run that and below and copy these links to my uh, Google Charm you know, over here so it will shows under the event will shows the loss and that we will see that we have a big gap between the task loss and the train loss My roommate was back to the house, so I just changed my location to my uh, my bathroom again. So let's uh, continue to talk about the, um, the the overfitting problem over here. So we have overfitting problem issues at this moment, too, right? Then we could use the drop out function like this one to drop out some of the uh, results to overcome the overfitting problem. So if you're very interested about what is drop out, you can just Google it to have a better understanding. But it's out of the scope in this tutorial, so I just ignore the the teaching process. I just just use it directly. So after, as you can see, after I've output the activated values. Uh, to the layer 2, from layer 1 to layer 2, I will go through one dropout process over here to drop out some probability of the result, for example, 50% of the result, and to pass to then pass to the layer 2 to reduce the overfitting problem. So, that is to say, I have to add the dropout function before the activated value right so we could just uh, where is my code so in here we just add uh, the drop out probability yeah, I think it's okay to add before this one or uh, add after we calculate this one or after we calculate the output both okay I think it's up to you but I'd like to add it in here so we add the dropout dropped function dropped wx plus b as tf dot n dot drop out wx because I have to use the same name because the same name over here so this is the dropped value from this one by using drop out and uh, that is plus b and uh, keep we have to pass another parameters over here probability 
how many probability that we need to keep for this job out uh, pr process. For example, we have we can define this keep probability to 50%. Uh, we keep 50% and drop to 50%, or we can uh, put the probability to 20%. So we keep 20% of the results and drop 80% of other results. So that is the job out. So after the job out, this value ha has already been dropped. Then we put this value, go to the output layer, uh, output result, and then generate the output, uh, return the output for the layers. And if you remember that, we have the key probability, and this one is a placeholder. So, uh, key probability equals to tf dot place holder t tf dot float thirty two, and we'll pass the number or percentage for the placeholder later on in this process or end this process. So. The key probability we we put for this one is we just try the 0 0.5, which is 50% at first. And when when training, you have to do the key probability that uh, which number you want. But in the test, you have to use key probability. Keep all probability when we output the result. We don't need to drop anything. So just keep probability equals to one. And this one is also one. And what something else should be fine, I think. Um, let's check it out. Okay, let's just check it out. If you still remember, we have a big gap between the task and training loss. But if we try this out, oh. Just wait a moment. Wait a moment. I have to. I think I have to. I have to delete this lock, and then to run it again. Okay, and back to my terminal, and do this tensorboard lock directory again. Copy this line, put into my browser, and take a look. These two lines becomes very close to each other, and this is the uh, functionality of dropout to overcome the, the overfitting problem, which will which we have in here a big gap. The dropout is to reduce this big gap between the prediction and the task. So next time we'll talk about after we train a neural network, we want to store this neural network to my local directory, right? Because we don't want to waste our time to train it another time. So next time we're go going to talk about how to store the neural network, all the parameters of the neural network, and restore it from the local directory. So see you next time. If you have any questions, just leave the comments at below, and I uh, will check it out. And hope you will like it. And so Please subscribe to my channel to check out more interesting tutorials in machine learning. So see you next time. Bye.